A telephone derived from the Greek tele tele far and phone phone voice together meaning distant voice or phone is a telecommunications device that permits two or more users to conduct a conversation when they are too far apart to be heard directly. A telephone converts sound, typically and most efficiently the human voice, into electronic signals that are transmitted via cables and other communication channels to another telephone which reproduces the sound to the receiving user. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell was the first to be granted a United States patent for a device that produced clearly intelligible replication of the human voice. This instrument was further developed by many others. The telephone was the first device in history that enabled people to talk directly with each other across large distances. Telephones rapidly became indispensable to businesses, government and households. The essential elements of a telephone are a microphone transmitter to speak into and an earphone receiver which reproduces the voice in a distant location. In addition, most telephones contain a ringer to announce an incoming telephone call, and a dial or keypad to enter a telephone number when initiating a call to another telephone. The receiver and transmitter are usually built into a handset which is held up to the ear and mouth during conversation. The dial may be located either on the handset or on a base unit to which the handset is connected. The transmitter converts the sound waves to electrical signals which are sent through a telephone network to the receiving telephone, which converts the signals into audible sound in the receiver or sometimes a loudspeaker. Telephones are duplex devices, meaning they permit transmission in both directions simultaneously. The first telephones were directly connected to each other from one customer's office or residence to another customer's location. Being impractical beyond just a few customers, these systems were quickly replaced by manually operated centrally located switchboards. These exchanges were soon connected together, eventually forming an automated, worldwide public switch telephone network. For greater mobility, various radio systems were developed for transmission between mobile stations on ships and automobiles in the mid-20th century. Handheld mobile phones were introduced for personal service starting in 1973. In later decades their analog cellular system evolved into digital networks with greater capability and lower cost. Convergence has given most modern cell phones capabilities far beyond simple voice conversation. Most are smartphones, integrating all mobile communication and many computing needs. Topic. Basic principles A traditional landline telephone system, also known as plain old telephone service POTS, commonly carries both control and audio signals on the same twisted pair see in diagram of insulated wires, the telephone line. The control and signaling equipment consists of three components, the ringer, the hook switch, and a dial. The ringer, or beeper, light or other device A7, alerts the user to incoming calls. The hook switch signals to the central office that the user has picked up the handset to either answer a call or initiate a call. A dial, if present, is used by the subscriber to transmit a telephone number to the central office when initiating a call. Until the 1960s dials used almost exclusively the rotary technology, which was replaced by dual-tone multi-frequency signaling DTMF with push-button telephones A4. A major expense of wireline telephone service is the outside wire plant. Telephones transmit both the incoming and outgoing speech signals on a single pair of wires. A twisted pair line rejects electromagnetic interference EMI and crosstalk better than a single wire or an untwisted pair. The strong outgoing speech signal from the microphone transmitter does not overpower the weaker incoming speaker receiver signal with side tone because a hybrid coil A3 and other components compensate the imbalance. The junction box B arrests lightning B2 and adjusts the line's resistance B1 to maximize the signal power for the line length. Telephones have similar adjustments for inside line lengths A8. The line voltages are negative compared to earth, to reduce galvanic corrosion. Negative voltage attracts positive metal ions toward the wires. <laughs> <laughs> Details of operation 
The landline telephone contains a switchhook A4 and an alerting device, usually a ringer A7, that remains connected to the phone line whenever the phone is on hook, i.e. the switch A4 is open, and other components which are connected when the phone is off hook. The off-hook components include a transmitter microphone, A2, a receiver speaker, A1, and other circuits for dialing, filtering A3, and amplification. A calling party wishing to speak to another party will pick up the telephone's handset, thereby operating a lever which closes the switchhook A4, which powers the telephone by connecting the transmitter microphone, receiver speaker, and related audio components to the line. The off-hook circuitry has a low resistance less than 300 ohms which causes a direct current DC, which comes down the line C from the telephone exchange. The exchange detects this current, attaches a digit receiver circuit to the line, and sends a dial tone to indicate readiness. On a modern push-button telephone, the caller then presses the number keys to send the telephone number of the called party. The keys control a tone generator circuit not shown that makes DTMF tones that the exchange receives. A rotary dial telephone uses pulse dialing, sending electrical pulses, that the exchange can count to get the telephone number as of 2010 many exchanges were still equipped to handle pulse dialing. If the called party's line is available, the exchange sends an intermittent ringing signal about 75 volts alternating current AC in North America and UK and 60 volts in Germany to alert the called party to an incoming call. If the called party's line is in use, the exchange returns a busy signal to the calling party. However, if the called party's line is in use but has call waiting installed, the exchange sends an intermittent audible tone to the called party to indicate an incoming call. The ringer of a telephone A7 is connected to the line through a capacitor A6, which blocks direct current but passes the alternating current of the ringing signal. The telephone draws no current when it is on hook, while a DC voltage is continually applied to the line. Exchange circuitry D2 can send an AC current down the line to activate the ringer and announce an incoming call. When there is no automatic exchange, telephones have hand-cranked magnetos to generate a ringing voltage back to the exchange or any other telephone on the same line. When a landline telephone is inactive on hook, the circuitry at the telephone exchange detects the absence of direct current to indicate that the line is not in use. When a party initiates a call to this line, the exchange sends the ringing signal. When the called party picks up the handset, they actuate a double circuit switchhook not shown, which may simultaneously disconnect the alerting device and connect the audio circuitry to the line. This, in turn, draws direct current through the line, confirming that the called phone is now active. The exchange circuitry turns off the ring signal, and both telephones are now active and connected through the exchange. The parties may now converse as long as both phones remain off hook. When a party hangs up, placing the handset back on the cradle or hook, direct current ceases in that line, signaling the exchange to disconnect the call. Calls to parties beyond the local exchange are carried over trunk lines which establish connections between exchanges. In modern telephone networks, fiber optic cable and digital technology are often employed in such connections. Satellite technology may be used for communication over very long distances. In most landline telephones, the transmitter and receiver microphone and speaker are located in the handset, although in a speakerphone these components may be located in the base or in a separate enclosure. Powered by the line, the microphone A2 produces a modulated electric current which varies its frequency and amplitude in response to the sound waves arriving at its diaphragm. The resulting current is transmitted along the telephone line to the local exchange then onto the other phone via the local exchange or via a larger network, where it passes through the coil of the receiver A3. The varying current in the coil produces a corresponding movement of the receiver's diaphragm, reproducing the original sound waves present at the transmitter. Along with the microphone and speaker, additional circuitry is incorporated to prevent the incoming speaker signal and the outgoing microphone signal from interfering with each other. This is accomplished through a hybrid coil A3. The incoming audio signal passes through a resistor A8 and the primary winding of the coil A3, which passes it to the speaker A1. Since the current path A8A3 has a far lower impedance than the microphone A2, virtually all of the incoming signal passes through it and bypasses the microphone. 
At the same time the DC voltage across the line causes a DC current which is split between the resistor coil A8A3 branch and the microphone coil A2A3 branch. The DC current through the resistor coil branch has no effect on the incoming audio signal. But the DC current passing through the microphone is turned into AC current in response to voice sounds which then passes through only the upper branch of the coils A3 primary winding, which has far fewer turns than the lower primary winding. This causes a small portion of the microphone output to be fed back to the speaker, while the rest of the AC current goes out through the phone line. A lineman's handset is a telephone designed for testing the telephone network, and may be attached directly to aerial lines and other infrastructure components. History Before the development of the electric telephone, the term, telephone, was applied to other inventions, and not all early researchers of the electrical device called it telephone. Perhaps the earliest use of the word for a communications system was the telephone of Gottfried Huth in 1796. Huth proposed an alternative to the optical telegraph of Claude Chap in which the operators in the signaling towers would shout to each other by means of what he called, speaking tubes, but would now be called giant megaphones. A communication device for sailing vessels called a telephone was invented by the captain John Taylor in 1844. This instrument used four air horns to communicate with vessels in foggy weather. Johann Philipp Rice used the term in reference to his invention, commonly known as the Rice telephone, in c. 1860. His device appears to be the first device based on conversion of sound into electrical impulses. The term telephone was adopted into the vocabulary of many languages. It is derived from the Greek, tele tele, far and phone, phone, voice, together meaning, distant voice. Credit for the invention of the electric telephone is frequently disputed. As with other influential inventions such as radio, television, the light bulb, and the computer, several inventors pioneered experimental work on voice transmission over a wire and improved on each other's ideas. New controversies over the issue still arise from time to time. Charles Bourcel, Antonio Mucci, Johann Philip Rice, Alexander Graham Bell, and Alicia Gray, amongst others, have all been credited with the invention of the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell was the first to be awarded a patent for the electric telephone by the United States Patent and Trademark Office (USPTO) in March 1876. The Bell patents were forensically victorious and commercially decisive. That first patent by Bell was the master patent of the telephone, from which other patents for electric telephone devices and features flowed. In 1876, shortly after Bell's patent application, Hungarian engineer Tivadar Puskas proposed the telephone switch, which allowed for the formation of telephone exchanges, and eventually networks. In the United Kingdom, the blower is used as a slang term for a telephone. The term came from Navy slang for a speaking tube. Topic. Timeline of early development 1844, Innocenzo Manzetti first mooted the idea of a «speaking telegraph» or telephone. Use of the «speaking telegraph» and «sound telegraph» monikers would eventually be replaced by the newer, distinct name «telephone». 26 26th of August 1854, Charles Bourcel published an article in the magazine L'Illustration Paris, Transmission électrique de la parole, electric transmission of speech, describing a make and break type telephone transmitter later created by Johann Rice. The 26th of October 1861, Johann Philipp Rice (1834–1874) publicly demonstrated the Rice telephone before the Physical Society of Frankfurt. Rice telephone was not limited to musical sounds. Rice also used his telephone to transmit the phrase, Das Pfeffer frisst keinen Gurkensalat. The horse does not eat cucumber salad. The 22nd of August 1865, Le Fuil de reported, It is rumored that English technicians to whom Mr. Manzetti illustrated his method for transmitting spoken words on the telegraph wire intend to apply said invention in England on several private telegraph lines. 
however telephones would not be demonstrated there until 1876, with a set of telephones from Bell. 28 December 1871, Antonio Mucci files patent caveat number 3335 in the U.S. Patent Office titled, Sound Telegraph, describing communication of voice between two people by wire. A patent caveat was not an invention patent award, but only an unverified notice filed by an individual that he or she intends to file a regular patent application in the future. 1874, Mucci, after having renewed the caveat for two years does not renew it again, and the caveat lapses. 6 April 1875, Bell's U.S. Patent 161739, "'Transmitters and Receivers for Electric Telegraphs' is granted. This uses multiple vibrating steel reeds in make-break circuits. The 11th of February 1876, Alicia Gray invents a liquid transmitter for use with a telephone but does not build one. The 14th of February 1876, Gray files a patent caveat for transmitting the human voice through a telegraphic circuit. The 14th of February 1876, Alexander Graham Bell applies for the patent Improvements in Telegraphy for electromagnetic telephones using what is now called amplitude modulation oscillating current and voltage but which he referred to as undulating current the 19th of february 1876 gray is notified by the us patent office of an interference between his caveat and bell's patent application gray decides to abandon his caveat the 7th of March 1876, Bell's U.S. Patent 174,465, Improvement in Telegraphy, is granted, covering the method of, and apparatus for, transmitting vocal or other sounds telegraphically, by causing electrical undulations, similar in form to the vibrations of the air accompanying the said vocal or other sound. The 10th of March 1876, the first successful telephone transmission of clear speech using a liquid transmitter when Bell spoke into his device, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. And Watson heard each word distinctly. The 30th of January 1877, Bell's US patent 186787 is granted for an electromagnetic telephone using permanent magnets, iron diaphragms, and a call bell. The 27th of April 1877, Edison files for a patent on a carbon graphite transmitter. The patent 474,230 was granted the 3rd of May 1892 after a 15-year delay because of litigation. Edison was granted patent 222,390 for a carbon granules transmitter in 1879. Topic: Early commercial instruments. Early telephones were technically diverse. Some used a water microphone. Some had a metal diaphragm that induced current in an electromagnet wound around a permanent magnet, and some were dynamic. Their diaphragm vibrated a coil of wire in the field of a permanent magnet, or the coil vibrated the diaphragm. The sound-powered dynamic variants survived in small numbers through the 20th century in military and maritime applications, where its ability to create its own electrical power was crucial. Most, however, used the Edison, Berliner carbon transmitter, which was much louder than the other kinds, even though it required an induction coil which was an impedance-matching transformer to make it compatible with the impedance of the line. The Edison patents kept the Bell monopoly viable into the 20th century, by which time the network was more important than the instrument. Early telephones were locally powered, using either a dynamic transmitter or by the powering of a transmitter with a local battery. One of the jobs of outside plant personnel was to visit each telephone periodically to inspect the battery. During the 20th century, telephones powered from the telephone exchange over the same wires that carried the voice signals became common. Early telephones used a single wire for the subscriber's line, with ground return used to complete the circuit as used in telegraphs. The earliest dynamic telephones also had only one port opening for sound, with the user alternately listening and speaking or rather, shouting into the same hole. Sometimes the instruments were operated in pairs at each end, making conversation more convenient but also more expensive. At first, the benefits of a telephone exchange were not exploited. 
Instead telephones were leased in pairs to a subscriber, who had to arrange for a telegraph contractor to construct a line between them, for example between a home and a shop. Users who wanted the ability to speak to several different locations would need to obtain and set up three or four pairs of telephones. Western Union, already using telegraph exchanges, quickly extended the principle to its telephones in New York City and San Francisco, and Bell was not slow in appreciating the potential. Signaling began in an appropriately primitive manner. The user alerted the other end, or the exchange operator, by whistling into the transmitter. Exchange operation soon resulted in telephones being equipped with a bell in a ringer box, first operated over a second wire, and later over the same wire, but with a condenser capacitor in series with the bell coil to allow the AC ringer signal through while still blocking DC, keeping the phone on hook. Telephones connected to the earliest Strauger switch automatic exchanges had seven wires, one for the knife switch, one for each telegraph key, one for the bell, one for the push button and two for speaking. Large wall telephones in the early 20th century usually incorporated the bell, and separate bell boxes for desk phones dwindled away in the middle of the century. Rural and other telephones that were not on a common battery exchange had a magneto hand crank generator to produce a high voltage alternating signal to ring the bells of other telephones on the line and to alert the operator. Some local farming communities that were not connected to the main networks set up barbed wire telephone lines that exploited the existing system of field fences to transmit the signal. In the 1890s a new smaller style of telephone was introduced, packaged in three parts. The transmitter stood on a stand, known as a candlestick, for its shape. When not in use, the receiver hung on a hook with a switch in it, known as a switch hook. Previous telephones required the user to operate a separate switch to connect either the voice or the bell. With the new kind, the user was less likely to leave the phone off the hook. In phones connected to magneto exchanges, the bell, induction coil, battery and magneto were in a separate bell box or ringer box. In phones connected to common battery exchanges, the ringer box was installed under a desk, or other out-of-the-way place, since it did not need a battery or magneto. Cradle designs were also used at this time, having a handle with the receiver and transmitter attached, now called a handset, separate from the cradle base that housed the magneto crank and other parts. They were larger than the candlestick and more popular. Disadvantages of single wire operation such as crosstalk and hum from nearby AC power wires had already led to the use of twisted pairs and, for long-distance telephones, four-wire circuits. Users at the beginning of the 20th century did not place long-distance calls from their own telephones but made an appointment to use a special sound-proofed long-distance telephone booth furnished with the latest technology. What turned out to be the most popular and longest-lasting physical style of telephone was introduced in the early 20th century, including Bell's 202-type desk set. A carbon granule transmitter and electromagnetic receiver were united in a single molded plastic handle, which were not in use Saturday in a cradle in the base unit. The circuit diagram of the Model 202 shows the direct connection of the transmitter to the line, while the receiver was induction coupled. In local battery configurations, when the local loop was too long to provide sufficient current from the exchange, the transmitter was powered by a local battery and inductively coupled, while the receiver was included in the local loop. The coupling transformer and the ringer were mounted in a separate enclosure, called the subscriber set. The dial switch in the base interrupted the line current by repeatedly but very briefly disconnecting the line 1 to 10 times for each digit, and the hook switch in the center of the circuit diagram disconnected the line and the transmitter battery while the handset was on the cradle. In the 1930s, telephone sets were developed that combined the bell and induction coil with the desk set, obviating a separate ringer box. The rotary dial becoming commonplace in the 1930s in many areas enabled customer dialed service, but some magneto systems remained even into the 1960s. After World War II, the telephone networks saw rapid expansion and more efficient telephone sets, such as the Model 500 telephone in the United States, were developed that permitted larger local networks centered around central offices. A breakthrough new technology was the introduction of touch-tone signaling using push-button telephones by American Telephone and Telegraph Company in 1963. <laughs> <laughs> Digital telephones and voice over IP 
The invention of the transistor in 1947 dramatically changed the technology used in telephone systems and in the long-distance transmission networks. With the development of electronic switching systems in the 1960s, telephony gradually evolved towards digital telephony which improved the capacity, quality, and cost of the network. The development of digital data communications method, such as the protocols used for the Internet, it became possible to digitize voice and transmit it as real-time data across computer networks, giving rise to the field of Internet Protocol IP, telephony, also known as Voice over Internet Protocol VoIP, a term that reflects the methodology memorably. VoIP has proven to be a disruptive technology that is rapidly replacing traditional telephone network infrastructure. As of January 2005, up to 10% of telephone subscribers in Japan and South Korea have switched to this digital telephone service. A January 2005 Newsweek article suggested that Internet telephony may be the next big thing. As of 2006 many VoIP companies offer service to consumers and businesses. From a customer perspective, IP telephony uses a high bandwidth internet connection and specialized customer premises equipment to transmit telephone calls via the internet, or any modern private data network. The customer equipment may be an analog telephone adapter which interfaces a conventional analog telephone to the IP networking equipment, or it may be an IP phone that has the networking and interface technology built into the desktop set and provides the traditional, familiar parts of a telephone, the handset, the dial or keypad, and a ringer in a package that usually resembles a standard telephone set. In addition, many computer software vendors and telephony operators provide softphone application software that emulates a telephone by use of an attached microphone and audio headset, or loudspeaker. Despite the new features and conveniences of IP telephones, some may have notable disadvantages compared to traditional telephones. Unless the IP telephone's components are backed up with an uninterruptible power supply or other emergency power source, the phone ceases to function during a power outage as can occur during an emergency or disaster when the phone is most needed. Traditional phones connected to the older PSTN network do not experience that problem since they are powered by the telephone company's battery supply, which will continue to function even if there is a prolonged power outage. Another problem in Internet-based services is the lack of a fixed physical location, impacting the provisioning of emergency services such as police, fire or ambulance, should someone call for them. Unless the registered user updates the IP phone's physical address location after moving to a new residence, emergency services can be, and have been, dispatched to the wrong location. Symbols. Graphic symbols used to designate telephone service or phone-related information in print, signage, and other media include U plus 2121, telephone U plus 260E, U plus 260F, U plus 2706, and U plus 2315. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mobile telephone adoption. In 2002, only 10% of the world's population used cell phones and by 2005 that percentage had risen to 46%. By the end of 2009, there were a total of nearly 6 billion mobile and fixed-line telephone subscribers worldwide. This included 1.26 billion fixed-line subscribers and 4.6 billion mobile subscribers. Patents U.S. 174,465 PDF PIW.USPTO.gov. Telegraphy, Bell's first telephone patent. Alexander Graham Bell U.S. 186,787 Electric telegraphy, permanent magnet receiver. Alexander Graham Bell US 474230 Speaking Telegraph Graphite Transmitter Thomas Edison US 203016 Speaking Telephone Carbon Button Transmitter Thomas Edison US 222390 Carbon Telephone Carbon Granules Transmitter Thomas Edison 
US 485311 telephone solid back carbon transmitter Anthony C White Bell engineer this design was used until 1925 and installed phones were used until the 1940s. US 3, 449,750 — Duplex radio communication and signaling apparatus — G. H. Swigert US 3,663,762 — Cellular mobile communication system — Amos Edward Joel Bell Labs US 3,906,166 Radio telephone system, Dynatac cell phone, Martin Cooper AL, Motorola. Equals equals see also.